Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in for today's crochet tutorial. So today's pattern is this really super cute, chunky alpaca, which is actually an older pattern of mine that I've recently updated. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start on the alpaca's head, and to begin, we'll need to make a magic loop and then add six single crochet to the magic loop. Once you have six single crochet in your magic loop, pull your tail to close the loop, and we'll go ahead and get started on round two. So for round two, we're going to increase in each stitch in the magic loop. So we'll go from having 6 stitches to 12 stitches. Okay, once you reach the end of row 2, it's time to move to row 3. And this row will be adding one single crochet and then increasing in the next stitch. So we start off with one single crochet. If you'd like, you can start marking your rows here. I know I like to use a bobby pin to mark mine. So one single crochet, and then increase. And we'll repeat that all the way around until we reach our stitch marker. Okay, once you finish row three, we're gonna move on to row four. And row four through row seven are actually just single crochet all the way around for each row. So we're building the height on our alpaca's head. So you'll go around and put a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So to finish off the head, I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch of row 7 and then cut a long tail with my scissors and then pull this stitch through. All right, and we'll come back to this later once we make the mouth and the ears. Next, we're going to make the body of the alpaca. So still working in that chunky yarn and with our 10 millimeter hook, we're going to tie another magic loop and then we're gonna put six single crochet inside that magic loop. Okay, so I've magic looped and I pulled my tail in tight. So next we're going to put two single crochet in each stitch of the magic loop, just like the head. Okay, so I've just finished row two. So now I'm going to do row three, which is a single crochet in the first stitch. I'm gonna start marking my stitches here too and then an increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around. Okay, I've reached the end of row three, so now I'm going to move on to row four, which is a single crochet in the first two stitches of the row. So single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, and then an increase in the next. So we're gonna repeat that pattern of single crochet, single crochet, increase, all the way until we reach our stitch marker. Okay, I've just reached the end of row four, so I'm ready to move on to row five. Row five is just one single crochet in every stitch all the way around your row. All right, I'm ready to start in on row six. So we're going to single crochet in the first five stitches of this row. So 
So that's one. Okay, and then in the next stitch, we're gonna add our first foot, the first front foot. And to do that, we're gonna make a five double crochet bobble stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, insert into the stitch and pull up a loop, pull through two loops, and then we're gonna repeat that process until we have five stitches or six loops total stacked on our hook. So that's one done. There's two. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six loops total, five double crochet total on your hook. So to close the stitch off, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all of the loops on our hook, and then a really tight chain one to close the bobble stitch off. Once you finish that bobble stitch, we're gonna put a single crochet in the next stitch, and look really carefully, sometimes it's easy to miss the stitch that's right next to the one that you've made. It's really snug, kind of close. Put a single crochet in that stitch. And then we're gonna push the bobble stitch so that it sticks out. They have a tendency to kind of want to go in and we want it to be on the surface of our work. Okay, so we've already done the first stitch outside of the bobble stitch foot. So then we're gonna do another three single crochet before we make our next bobble stitch. So that's two, three, four. Okay, so now it's time to make our second bobble stitch foot. So to do that, just like with the first one, we we'll yarn over, drop a loop, drop a second loop, and then repeat that. until you have six loops on your hook. And then we're gonna pull through all loops and make a tight chain one to close. Again, remember to kind of push the bobble stitch out a little bit and then look really carefully for your next stitch. All right, now that we've added the first feet, we're gonna continue adding single crochet all the way around to the end of this row. I'm ready to start row seven. And actually row seven through row 10 are all just single crochets. But I wanna show you how to go over the bobble stitch feet because it's a little weird where they happen. So we'll go ahead and start this row together. So a single crochet in the first stitch. And then all the stitches leading up to the bobble stitch. And then for the bobble stitch, we're going to be working in this loop on the way in. I don't work into that chain one because it leaves a little bit of a hole if you skip this. So we're going to put a single crochet there and then skip over this chain one and then place another single crochet in the stitch just outside of the bobble stitch, right here. So let's do that again together. We're gonna do the next four stitches together. And now we've reached the bobble stitch for the second foot. So we're gonna go through this loop on the outside of the bobble stitch and skip over that tight chain one and into the single crochet just to the outside of the bottle stitch. Okay, and then we're going to continue working single crochets 
until the end of row 10. That's four rows total of single crochet stitches. All right, I've just wrapped up row 10. And I'm getting to move on to row 11, which is going to be our back row of feet. So to start this row, we need to put six single crochet rather than five, like we did for the first row of feet. Six single crochet, and then we'll make our five double crochet bobble stitch. So just like before, on our front row bobble stitch, we're going to put five mostly finished double crochets. So remember, that's just to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. We'll do that five times total. Once you have six loops total, five double crochet stitches, and then of course the loop from the last stitch on your hook, you're going to pull through all of the loops and then make one tight chain to seal your bobble stitch off. And then just like that first row, look really carefully for your next single crochet stitch and push your bobble stitch out so that the foot is to the outside and not on the inside. Then we're going to make four stitches total, so three more single crochet. And then we'll add our last foot, the same way we did our first one. And we'll go through all the loops chain one, tight chain to close, and then single crochet. Okay, so we finished adding the feet. They should be in line with the feet that we made in the first row that we did feet in. So then we're going to continue adding single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Okay, that polishes off row 11. So for row 12, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. All right, that's row 12 done. Moving on to row 13, where we're going to start decreasing. So we're going to put two single crochet in the next two stitches. So one in this one, one in the next. And then we're going to decrease by single crocheting two stitches together. So to do that, you yarn over, or, sorry, not yarn over, but go through your next stitch and pull up a loop. Then go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. And then pull through all the loops on your hook to single crochet two stitches together. So we'll do that one more time. Two single crochet in the next two stitches. And then single crochet two stitches together to do a decrease. So we'll keep that pattern up till we're all the way back around to our stitch marker. Okay, time for row 14. We're going to continue decreasing by putting one single crochet in the next stitch and then single crocheting the next two stitches together. And we'll repeat that of one single crochet decrease all the way around till we reach our stitch marker. All right, before we finish decreasing, we're going to add some stuffing. So I like to pull my working loop up so I don't accidentally undo any of my work. And then we're going to add a bunch of stuffing inside of the body. All right, so now that we have stuffed the body, it's time for us to put our hook back in and finish with row 15, where we're going to decrease in every stitch all the way around. 
All right, so once we've decreased in every stitch of this row, we'll fasten off by slip stitching to the next stitch. And then we'll take our scissors, cut ourselves just a little bit of a tail. You don't need a ton, just enough to sew with. And then we'll pull our yarn through the loop to close. And then we're going to take our tapestry needle, thread this tail end through, and then sew through each stitch that's remaining. Once you've thrown, sewn through each stitch, you can pull to cinch the work closed. And then we're going to tie a knot and weave the tail end in. So I like to tie my knots by looping over the surface of my work and then going down through the fabric of the work and up through that loop and then pull. I like kind of keep my fingers on the loop as I tighten it to keep it close to the body. And then I send my needle through the body of my work. Double check that you haven't pulled so much that you've sort of like pulled the fabric in a little bit. We don't want that. Once you've done that, you can take your scissors, cut that tail, and you've finished the body. Alright, the last thing that we need to crochet with our Chucky yarn is both of the ears. So to do that, We'll make a magic loop and we'll put six single crochet in that magic loop. Once you've put six single crochet in the magic loop, go ahead and pull that tail tight to close your magic loop. And then we're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet that we made to close the ear off. Then we're going to take our scissors, cut a little bit of a tail, and then pull to close the ear off. So we're going to need two of these little rounds. You can go ahead and cut your magic loop tail off too. So we need one more of these. All right, I finished both of my chunky ears, which means I'm done using chunky yarn and my 10 millimeter hook and can switch to a four millimeter and some white worsted weight yarn for the mouth. So to make our mouth, we're gonna start off with a magic loop and we're gonna put six single crochet inside of the magic loop. And then we're ready for row two, which is we're going to put an increase in each stitch all the way around. So that's two single crochet in each stitch. All right, I've finished putting two stitches in each stitch all the way around. So now I'm ready for my last row, which is we're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. And we'll finish off by slip stitching in the first slip stitch that we made. And then we'll use our scissors to cut ourselves a tail. And then pull our hook so that stitch closes on itself. And then we can trim the magic loop tail on the back. And that's the finished mouth. All right, so now we need to sew the mouth. So go ahead and thread your embroidery needle with some black embroidery floss. And then we're gonna tie a knot at the end of the needle, or at the end of the thread. 
so that we can embroider the mouth. So once you've got your needle threaded, go ahead and grab the little circle that we made for the mouth. And we're going to start off by sewing the nose. And if you look, you can kind of see there's two stitches here that I like to sew my nose through. So you can go up through one and then down through the other. Careful that you don't accidentally grab the tail left over from the mouth. And then we're going to do a couple more straight stitches in the same space that we made this first straight stitch. So let's do three total. And try to come up through that same hole each time. To add the mouth, we're going to sew a straight stitch underneath the nose. And then we're going to cinch this straight stitch up towards the nose like this by sewing underneath the nose and then grabbing that stitch with our embroidery floss and pulling it up towards the nose. So go back down through that same stitch you sewed up through to cinch it. Sometimes you have to kind of pull and tug so it does what you want. There we go. And then we're going to add the sides of the mouth because right now it's kind of grumpy looking. So to do that just sew a stitch on the outside corner and come back down through the side of the mouth. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And that gives us the completed mouth. Alright, so now we're ready to assemble. Here are all of the bits that you should have. But we're ready to assemble and we're going to start with the head. So first, let's sort of position where we want the eyes and the mouth to go. So I like my mouth to be just a little bit lower than where my eyes are. So I'm going to stick the mouth on and then using my safety eyes I'm going to sort of wiggle it around until I think it looks cute. Like this. But you can also shift the mouth up so it's directly in between your safety eyes. Or you can put your safety eyes up a lot higher than the mouth. It's kind of up to you how you want to position it. I like mine to kind of be a little more compact. So they're all sort of together like this. So once you've got that positioned, go ahead and snap the backs of your safety eyes on. And then we're going to sew the mouth on. So I like to kind of fold the little black embroidery floss tail behind because it's going to get hidden thankfully, on uh, the face of the alpaca. So go ahead and thread your embroidery needle, or your tapestry needle. And then we're just going to sew the mouth of this on by sending stitches straight down through, and then back up all the way around until the mouth is attached. Okay, I've now gone all the way around the mouth, so I'm ready to tie a knot. So I'm going to just tie a knot on the inside, and you don't even need to cut any extra tail. You can just tuck it directly inside of his head. 
which we're now going to stuff. So go ahead and grab some of your stuffing and stuff away. Don't overstuff the head because then it will kind of puff away from the body, which we don't want. Now it's time for us to sew the head onto the body. So double check that you're looking at the body correctly. We want the magic loop that we started with to be the front and where we decreased is the back. So we're gonna sew the head on this side. We're gonna do that just by setting the head down onto the top of the body and then whip stitching around the neck to attach. I'm going to continue this all the way around. Okay, so I've whip stitched the llama's head onto the body. So now I need to fasten off by tying a knot. And then weaving the tail into the body of the llama. Once you've done that, you can snip the tail, and the head is now attached. Alright, next we need to attach the ears. So we're going to go ahead and thread our tapestry needle with the tail left over from the ear. And then we're going to sew them to the top of his head right in line with the eye and then once you get it attached you're gonna just go back through the back of the ear and then back into the fabric of the body. I like to sew that three times just to really make sure the ear is attached. Then when the ear is attached, we're going to tie a knot at the back of the ear and weave our tail in. Go ahead and cut the tail and we've got one ear attached. We need to do the exact same thing with the other ear on the other side. All right, ears are attached, so the alpaca is technically done, but I personally like to add a bow to the front of my alpaca. So I've cut a little length of ribbon, and I'm gonna wrap it around his neck to tie a bow. And then I cut the ribbon so that it has a little flag on the end. Do the same on the other side. And he's complete. All right, so that concludes this tutorial for this little alpaca. So I hope that you liked making an alpaca with me. I really enjoy this pattern. I think the finished result is super cute. So. Thanks for watching.